Government certifications can help you grow your business by limiting competition and even allowing you to get contracts without competition. There are lots of companies wanting you to pay them to find out if you qualify, but you absolutely don't need to pay someone to do this. In this video, I walk you through a free tool you can use to find out if you qualify for government certifications. I'm going to show you the questions they ask and explain the rules so you know how to answer the questions. Plus, I'll share how you can get reliable, free one-on-one -on -one help with this. So let's jump in. You'll find the free tool at this government website, certify.sba.gov. I'm going to go through the tool answering all the questions as a person who qualifies for everything so that you can see all the questions it asks and how it works. We start here where it says, am I eligible? I click find out. The first question asks if I'm a U.S. citizen. And next, it asks if I own at least 51% of the business. And here on the side where it says more details, it explains that you need to own and control the business. Now, this is really important to understand. Ownership and control are not the same thing. Think of ownership and control as two separate tests. The first test is that you have to own at least 51% of the business. And the second test is that you must actually control the business. Next, it asks if the company is for profit because nonprofits aren't eligible. Next, you affirm you haven't been debarred or suspended by any federal entity. And next, they want to confirm that you operate in the U.S. In this question, they want to know whether your business meets the definition of a small business and therefore is eligible to bid on those government contracts that are reserved for small businesses. So here's what's important to understand. The definition of small business is based on your NAITS code, and the NAITS code describes what industry your business is in. So the first step is to identify your NAITS code. If you don't already know your NAITS code, then you can look it up at this website. That URL is census.gov slash NAICS. Now, there are things called size standards that the government uses to determine whether a business is small, and each NAITS code has a size standard. You can find the size standard associated with your NAITS code at this website. That's sba.gov slash size dash standards. And by the way, the size standards are really high. For example, for some NAITS codes, the size standard is as high as 41 and a half million in annual revenue or 1,500 employees. So chances are your business qualifies as a small business. The final thing to understand about this is that your business may operate in multiple NAITS codes, but for the purpose of getting certified, you need to identify one primary NAITS code and show that you meet the size standard for that NAITS code. The next set of questions is to determine whether your business qualifies as a woman-owned small business. This goes by the acronym WOSB or WASB. First, it asks if I'm a woman. Now, they asked me to enter my primary NAITS code, and the reason they asked this is that the WASPI program only operates in certain industries. So I enter my NAITS code and click on this Find NAITS button. And you see, it gives the result here. It says, yes, WASPI set-asides are available in your primary NAITS code. Now, it asks if I'm economically disadvantaged to determine whether I qualify for the economically disadvantaged WASPI program. And just to be clear, these financial tests don't apply for the WASPI program. They're just for the economically disadvantaged WASPI program. And here on the right, under more details, it explains that to qualify as economically disadvantaged, you have to meet three separate tests. First, your total assets must be less than $6 million. Second, your adjusted net worth must be less than $750,000. To determine your adjusted net worth, they exclude equity in your business, 
your primary residence and money and retirement accounts. And third, your HEI, that's your adjusted gross income, must be less than $350,000. The next set of questions relate to eligibility for the 8A program. And really, the 8A program is much better than the others. So this is the one you want if you qualify. First, they asked whether you're economically disadvantaged under the rules for the 8A program. And again, the details are listed on the right, but it's the same three criteria for total assets, adjusted net worth, and AGI that we just discussed for the economically disadvantaged WASPI program. Now, the purpose of this question is to identify social disadvantage. So here's the rule. To be eligible for the 8A program, the business must be majority owned by an individual who is socially disadvantaged. Some people are presumed to be socially disadvantaged, but if you're not a member of a presumed group, you may still be eligible for 8A if you demonstrate you've experienced bias. So I say, go ahead and apply for 8A even if you answer no to this question. For example, Lots of women get 8A certification, even though they answer no to this question. And here, they're explicitly asking you, do you consider yourself socially disadvantaged because you've experienced bias? For the next two questions, what you need to understand is you can only be in the 8A program once. So first, they ask if the business has been 8A certified before, because the business can only be in the 8A program once, even if ownership of the business changes. And next, they check whether you personally have previously used your one-time 8A eligibility. Since you haven't been 8A certified before, click no. Next, in these questions, they're checking to see if you qualify for HUBZone certification. The HUBZone program is different from the previous programs we've discussed. Eligibility for the previous programs is based on the owner of the business, but the HUBZone program is based on location. First, they tell you to go to the HUBZone map and look up your office address to find out if it's located in a HUBZone. And this is the HUBZone map. The URL is maps.certify.sba.gov, or I always just Google HUBZone map. Enter your office address up here in the top left and see if it's in a hub zone. Next, they want to know where your employees live. They ask, do 35% or more of the firm's employees live in a hub zone? So once again, you go to that hub zone map and enter the home address for each of your employees to find out if they live in a hub zone. So now let me answer two questions that always come up. First, they don't have to be in the same hub zone. The business and the employees can all be in different hub zones. That's totally fine. The requirement is just that the principal office and at least 35% of the firm's employees reside in a hub zone. And second, what if the business is just you and you work from your home? Well, that's totally fine. The address of your principal office can be your home address. Just use the hub zone maps to check whether your home address is in a hub zone. And that's it for the questions, and now they tell you the results. Based on the answers I gave, it tells me I may be eligible for the WASPI program, as well as the economically disadvantaged WASPI program, and the 8A program, and the hub zone program, and they provide these links to learn how to apply for each program. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground, but what if you still have questions? Well, I promised I'd direct you to a reliable source where you can get one-on-one -on -one help for free. The organization is called PTAC, and its job is to help you register and apply for these SBA contracting programs. So go ahead and Google your local PTAC and reach out to them for help. By the way, I have no affiliation with PTAC, but it's the place I trust to refer you to for help. Hey friends, I'm so glad you joined me today. And as always, please connect with me and let me know how this video was. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, 
and share the video if you know anyone who might benefit from this information. Thanks for watching. See you next time.